I'm Serenity, and my name is my mantra. I'm a transsexual, which it's my, in my case means that I'm a woman who was born into a man's body and is going through hormone replacement therapy, as stated earlier. I am not doing this because I am confused, but because I finally found out who I am, and I am doing my best to express my true self. I can only speak for my own life, and by no means can I speak for every trans person, but this is my experience with it. This is something I've felt as long as I can remember, but as a child and even in pubescence, it was difficult to put my finger on exactly what the gender dysphoria was. My denial was thick and armored. I knew I felt different somehow. I just couldn't relate to boys my age. I even tried to imitate other boys in their mannerisms, their posture, and how they spoke just to feel like I fit in. As I became older and more self-aware, I eventually convinced myself that despite the vast differences in the way I look at things, the way I approach relationships, and just how sensitive I was that I was just a femi guy, since I had no concept of being trans. It was almost like I was missing a big piece of myself, like I was flawed somehow. I had actually never heard of gender dysphoria or transgenderism, so I denied the val validity of my thoughts and buried them. I always felt more in tune with women, I had many things in common with them. Most guys and girls thought I was just really weird. <laughs> I was bullied by other guys I went to school with, and I was too passive to stand up for myself. I just did not fit on either side. I felt like I was somehow, I guess, more like a woman inside my head despite my male body. This was a strange realization to me, but it was dismissed because I thought it was just a misperception. As I became a young adult, I turned to drugs and alcohol to try and fit in and to numb the pain I couldn't find the cure for, let alone identify. I wore a beard to portray myself as rugged and, and loose clothes because I hated my skinny, curveless figure. I typically wore a trench coat to hide my hips swaying when I walked, which was natural. I was constantly trying to hide what I thought made me seem fragile or feminine to avoid being alienated. I was starting to realize that I was unhappy because the person everyone knew was an absolute lie and that I had, in a way, program myself to seem masculine to everyone else. Even the way I moved and held myself was feminine, naturally. I usually wore dull clothes to draw attention away from myself. Even after puberty and being told I was now a man, I still didn't see myself as macho, I wasn't sporty, I wasn't a hunter, and I had no desire to compete with other men. I started to question just what was going on with me. After a few more years of feeling like I didn't fit with either gender, one due to difference of interest and the other due to a difference of anatomy, I struggled to come to any other conclusion that, than that I was somehow born in the wrong body. I ran for myself for what seemed like forever, for almost 10 years. My goal was disassociation, to not feel anything, happy or sad. I tried to drown out my longings to free myself with drugs and alcohol. I came to the point where I just wanted to end my life. At the pinnacle of my poor choices, I found myself a convicted felon after five years of active addiction. I was going to any length to get my fix. Enough was enough. I sought help by asking the county attorney if I could have an alternative to going to prison. I did this by writing a long letter describing how sick I was of being on, dependent on drugs to cope. My request was granted and I was accepted into wellness court and put into treatment right away. I have sobriety, sobriety and the support of everyone for the to thank for the courage I needed to face myself. I thought sobriety would make everything clear to me. I was correct. In late September of 2012, almost af after almost three months of sober time, having won the first battles with addiction, I came to the conclusion that I needed to be honest with myself. It was time to begin finding out who I really am. After talking to an old friend of mine who had been transitioning herself, I finally accepted that I, like her, am a trans woman. It's not something tangible, and it's more of an inner knowing than anything. I came out to the mother of my child, who was more than supportive, encouraging even, and she let me try on some of her clothes. She took a picture of me, and I asked to see it. For the first time ever, I saw a glimpse of the woman you see before you now, and I wanted nothing less than to be her, no matter what it took. It was at this point that my entire life made sense. I was a person who lived in denial of themselves and took all the anguish with it. So, I was face to face with the painful realization that I had been living as a person that I created, not as I truly was. So, now what? The only solution I could come up with was to learn who I am and to stop hiding from the world. I came out to my parents and to, pu and to the public via Facebook later that week. 
Little by little, I got to know her and I came to love her. My worst day as a woman is still better than my best day trying to live as a man. I've met a lot of resistance, but I no longer let it deter me. Some of the more trying tasks in my transition were involving cosmetics and fashion. First of all, I had no idea what size I was, and it took me a while to find outfits that suited my figure. Another thing that I had a hard time with was learning how to put on makeup and getting used to how it made me look. My first attempts were mediocre at best. <laughs> I kept practicing, though, and it paid off. I eventually found what my style was, and now I get positive feedback on how I dress quite often. I used to get stared at and whispered about constantly. It used to throw me into anxiety attacks all too often, but it was more than worth it. I think what changed others' reactions to me was that I gained self-esteem. People can sense when you aren't secure in yourself. After a year of living as a woman full-time, having met the criteria for hormone therapy, I was referred by my therapist to my endocrinologist. Making the decision to transition, and especially to go on hormones, is not for the faint of heart. I was so scared that he would deny me treatment that I was literally shaking. <laughs> he asked me a series of questions to confirm that I was ready to begin. I answered them with a smile. He gave me my prescription, and my life was forever changed. That was a year ago today. I am still, a very, I am still very much a work in progress. At first, I thought transitioning would be simply my body feminizing. Far from it. I have learned to not let insults in other people's slots affect me harmfully, and I am more confident and happy than I've ever been in my life. I have found myself. It's been a process of letting go of all the conceived notions of what society wants me to be and to be serenity, my true self, instead. It's been quite the trying journey, and I couldn't have done it alone. To all of you who have supported me, you have my deepest thanks and gratitude. The message I wanted to carry in all of this, if nothing else, is that we as trans people are people too. We want to be accepted. We want to be respected. We work hard to be ourselves, with or without society's approval. We, just like you, have dreams and aspirations. My dream is to live in a world where saying I'm trans will be as easy as saying I'm a parent. We, we may have an uncommon condition that we did not choose, that many can't ever fully understand, but that does not mean that we are not valuable, lovable, and important. We are human. That's all that should matter to anyone. Thank you for listening.